What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be doing a 3D scene and compositing walkthrough of this live action hallway zombie shot that we have included in our Horde add-on for Blender trailer. As usual, this scene walkthrough is not really a tutorial, but will show some interesting visual effects concepts that you can use in creating some of your own scenes as well. Anyways guys, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we did for this shot was of course motion track our live action footage. So as you can see here, we've just created a few tracking points and tracked through our footage. We have a solve error of 1.32 pixels, which is not the best. However, I thought the geometry that we created for the scene was moving pretty similar to the shot. So I decided to go with it. After 3D tracking our shot, I started to sort of model out the general environment of our live action shot inside the computer. And I know I talk about this a lot, but whenever you're adding CG to live action, it's important to have at least a general recreation of your live action shot geometry inside of the computer so you get an idea of scale. And you can also project your footage onto the geometry and get more realistic lighting. So um, you can see here, I've just recreated the hallway in our scene in a very rudimentary way. It's not very complex. I didn't even model out the doorways or anything. I believe I just took a plane and extruded it, some walls here and then I just subdivided it so we could do some camera projection as well so pretty basic 3d environment set up here for recreating the live action shot I didn't do anything fancy just a long hallway here with the background cut off and then a floor and then I've just added the horde add-on zombie in the background here and it's already pre animated and looped and everything so I just kind of offset those frames as I desired so pretty simple setup regarding the actual placement of the 3d asset as I mentioned I did do a camera projection projection for the 3D environment here. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what I mean by that. Whenever we're adding an asset to live action footage, it's important to have similar lighting on that 3D asset as what was happening in the live action shot. So one of the best ways we can do that is by camera projection. And you can see right now I have our environment as indirect only, but you can see if I disable indirect only and sort of go into camera view here. I've actually projected a photo from our live action shot on top of our geometry recreation. And you can see it's not very accurate. It's you know even distorting as we rotate the camera around it. So it's not the best way to do this. However, for this specific shot, it was enough to just project an image of the live action shot onto this geometry. And then now by adding that image and creating this environment as an emission plane, we're actually lighting the zombie with the frame from the actual live action shot. And then by setting the environment as indirect only, we're not actually going to render out that camera projection, but the light from the projection is still going to light our zombie here creating a more realistic result so that was one of the main things we did for this shot and I do that all the time obviously you can be more precise with it if you'd like modeling and texturing different parts of the geometry more accurately but um, I thought this looked pretty good now in addition to our environment camera projection on the actual hallway here I wanted to accent the light hitting the zombie as well to make it blend into the scene even better so you'll notice that where we actually put the zombie in the scene there's a doorway to the left of the hallway that has some sort of window in it that's creating this shaft of light here on the floor. So that was one aspect of the lighting that I couldn't just recreate with basic camera projection of a screenshot from our live action footage. So what I decided to do instead is just add a very simple area light right where that doorway is. So you can see I've just added this light just to the left of our character, which is creating this nice rim on the zombie. So you can see I've just turned it on and off and that's just going to help it be integrated into the scene a lot better just by mimicking the source in the environment that's coming through this window here. So that was one thing I did to get the lighting of our zombie to match up a bit better. The other interesting thing to match in our live action shot were the um, lights that our SWAT team has on their weaponry here. So you can see that as they're moving through this hallway, they're checking different spaces using the lights on their rifles. So we wanted to try to mimic this lighting on our zombie as well. So what I had decided to do in this specific case, and I wasn't super precise with it, but I thought it worked pretty well. You can see I've just added this spotlight into our scene here and you can see I've just animated the spotlight effect to go past our zombie as the soldiers are moving through the hallway and pointing their lights in that general direction it wasn't totally accurate but you can see if I go into rendered view what it's doing here 
can see that as I move through the scene, the uh, light is creating a pretty nice little effect, creating some specularity on the skin of our zombie. And uh, you know, it's just subtle enough. It's not a super bright source, but it's just subtle enough to provide a little bit of environmental interaction on the zombie that we're adding to the scene. And yeah, essentially that was pretty much it guys. A pretty simple shot setup here. Again, just going through the basics here, recreating the live action shot inside of the computer, projecting an image of that environment to recreate that environmental lighting in a very rudimentary way to get us most of the way there. And then accenting the 3D asset that we're adding to our scene with some more lights that wouldn't be taken care of with that basic camera projection. So anyways, after creating the scene, I've rendered out two different view layers. I've rendered out the foreground zombie by itself here, just the zombie without the background and then I've also rendered a background shadow catcher which essentially is this ground plane here with any shadows from the zombie below it so I can composite the shadow and the zombie separately so anyways guys let's get into the basic compositing process now all right guys, so this is our compositing node tree and it's a fairly simple setup here. If you're not familiar with node-based compositing, it could look a little bit complex, but I'm just going to go through the shot here and show you the different effects that we've added to our different render layers. So the first thing that we added to our composite was our undistorted live action shot. So if we just go and add a viewer node here, this is the shot that we started out with, nothing added to it yet. And the first render layer that we overlaid was our shadow pass that we've overlaid with this alpha over node. So you can see that if we follow our node tree back this is our shadow pass so I'll just uh, you can kind of see it here the shadow of our zombie and I might just uh, take our viewer here and show you our shadow pass by itself here you can see this is the shadow of our zombie and then I mixed in some of the color of our background footage to kind of blend in the shot a bit better here and then I also have some roto data of our foreground characters right here and I've just used this roto data to hide that shadow of our zombie when the characters pass in front of it. So I'm just using the roto data plus a set alpha node to tell Blender not to show that shadow where the characters are over in front of it. So that's what this node is for. So again, we're overlaying our shadow pass, but before we overlay it with the alpha over node here, I'm adjusting it. I'm adding a little bit of blur to it to blend it into the shot a bit better with these two nodes. And then again, with this roto data of our foreground characters, I'm telling Blender to only show that shadow when the characters aren't in front of it. So that was our second layer. This third alpha over node here, I literally just wanted a little bit of a deeper shadow. So I've just duplicated our shadow pass and overlaid it once more with this alpha over node. So if we just take a look at this, you'll see we have our shadow for our zombie, but no zombie yet. And then right before, you can tell it's just a little bit of a lighter shadow. So I've just duplicated it once more to get a little bit of a deeper look. And then our next pass that we've added is our actual zombie element. So using this alpha over node, we're overlaying our actual zombie onto our footage like so. And I've done a few compositing tricks to this zombie element as well. So I'll just go through them briefly here. Here we have our zombie element. I'll just view this by itself really quick. Here's our zombie without anything added to it. You can see in this day, it's definitely not going to blend into our scene perfectly. If we did that, it would literally just be something like this. So definitely not going to cut it just like this. However, you can see the shadow is integrating it nicely with this foot here. So the first thing I did to blend in our zombie into our shot a bit better was multiply our ambient occlusion values with the beauty pass render. So as you can see here, our ambient occlusion pass is this one right here. It's just going to accent some of these shadows on our element. So we're multiplying that with our beauty pass to create a little bit of a deeper shadow. And also one thing you might notice with our footage is that in the deep background, our shadows are lifted and there's a little bit of haze in our environment. And also, if you look at the sides here, you'll notice that it's a little bit of a green tint. So one thing I wanted to do was just lift the shadows of our zombie element to a similar or even a little bit more than our foreground characters here. So you can see that that our foreground characters, there isn't a lot of detail in them, but the shadows are definitely lifted from a very contrasty black point. So one thing I like to do is just use a mix node and then mix in some of the color of our scene here. So in this case, I'm just using this sort of green color. And you'll notice that once we do this, for example, go ahead and grab a viewer node here. You'll notice that all of a sudden, our characters' shadows are just lifted in a way that will help it blend into the scene a bit better. And I have a tutorial on this. I'll put a link to it in the description below because I think it's a very effective technique. But you can see if I just dial this back, there's before and then after we do that, we get this lifted shadow look. Now, obviously you'll notice that the rest of our image is lifted as well, which is why we then use this set alpha node to tell Blender to only include the parts of this render that contain our zombie element. 
So we're using the alpha from the actual zombie to reset the image essentially. That's what this node does. So I uh, don't wanna to get too much into the complexity of that, but I'll put a link to that tutorial in the description below. Essentially what we're trying to do is lift the shadows in a way that matches the environment and the haze that's within our environment. So that's what we did there. And I'll show another before and after right here. So this is our zombie with ambient occlusion, but no lifted shadows or mixed in uh, color from our footage. And then once we add this mix node that mixes in some green and lifts the shadows a bit, we have an effect like this, which is integrating the zombie much more into our scene. Now, one thing I'm noticing here at this point in our compositing timeline, and you can probably notice it as well, you'll notice that our edges are pretty sharp here. So what I've done next here is just blur our element to match it to the background blurry as well so you can see that that just kind of integrates it into the scene a bit better and then finally I've used our rotor data once again here of our foreground characters to tell blender to only show our zombie elements where our foreground characters are not so you can see if I just utilize this rotor data what I'm going to get and now we have something that's pretty realistic. Now, one more effect that I added over the entire footage was actually a little bit of glare to help integrate our zombie element into the scene even more. So what I've done here is, as you can see, just added a few different glare nodes on top of our entire composite. So I've used a few fog glow effects, and then I've also used some glare streaks here. So we can see this in our viewer node really quick. Once we add that, we get this sort of light wrap effect around our zombie element here. And it's also adding some glare to our flashlight beams, which I thought was fine. But this is just one way to help integrate your element into the scene a bit better because we're actually overlaying some elements that would occur in photography over our entire footage. So it's just another way we can help base the CG element into the scene a bit better. And yeah, essentially that was it guys. Here's before the fog glow. And then after we have something like this, which you can see blends in those edges a bit nicer. Finally, I added a little bit of a film look in the grading process as well, which I did in our editing software. But that was how I created this zombie hallway shot inside of Blender. I hope you guys enjoy this short scene breakdown. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel, whether it be more breakdowns, more long form visual effects tutorials, or just our short quick tip videos. I'll see you next time.